Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another live stream. Tonight, we are talking about dragons again. So uh, we're gonna be doing some awesome designs in Photoshop, talking about how to solve some design issues and problems for a creature design that we're working on. And this is with the intention of taking this design uh, from Photoshop, developing it out into some concept art, uh, eventually into a model sheet, and then finally getting into Blender, where we will be working on doing a 3D model for visual effects on a film project that I'm working on. Uh, so it's gonna be quite a long journey. Uh, eventually could turn this into a course, uh, but a lot of that will depend on uh, how you guys are enjoying it, what kind of comments you leave me, and how enthusiastic you guys get about this sort of thing. So uh, I'm, I'm looking tonight to see uh, kind of how you guys are feeling about the variation with the streams that are happening. Uh, if you're enjoying the uh, Photoshop streams or the Substance Painter streams along with the Blender streams, then let me know what you enjoy seeing the most. Uh, obviously, most of my streams are going to be Blender streams, uh, but I will from time to time be doing some alternate streams in other software as well. So any feedback that you guys can give me is greatly appreciated. And I just want to thank you for joining me tonight. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe and like the video for tonight. Uh, anything that you guys do as far as subscriptions uh, helps me gain feedback and um, information about what is working, what isn't working and what you guys want to see. So uh, uh, the more people that subscribe, basically the longer I'll be around kind of doing this kind of thing uh, three times a week. So, uh, thank you guys for joining me again, and let's jump into tonight's topic. So I'm going to switch screens real fast, and let me pull this over. Okay, so you may or may not have seen the last live stream where we started talking about designing a dragon in Photoshop. If you haven't, it's on my YouTube channel. All you have to do is go a couple of streams back to last week, and there's a couple of hours stream where we talk about how to start designing a dragon uh, using some basic painting techniques and then some some ideas for design. And so uh, just to remind everybody kind of what we're doing tonight, we are looking at trying to solve some design issues for the dragon. Uh, we have the description over here on the left hand side. So let me kind of make this full screen so it's a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so in the upper, whoops, in the upper left hand corner over here, we have a description uh, kind of brought together by my team that I'm working on the film with in terms of what we want to see for the dragon. It's going to be a little bit of a different type of dragon than we possibly have seen before. And so the, the setting for this is going to be in the desert somewhere. And we want to create a dragon that reflects that type of design aesthetic. So uh, just to remind everybody, the wings are going to be a little bit different than normal. So far, we haven't solved that issue yet. Tonight, I'm really hoping to nail that down with you guys' help uh, as far as getting that to look appropriate for this design. Uh, we wanted to add some centipede-type legs uh, that kind of wrap around the body of a snake-like dragon. As you can see in the upper right-hand corner, we have kind of a thumbnail of what the dragon body type would look like. And then we have these sort of centipede legs in the lower right-hand corner uh, as um, we talked about in the last stream, wrapping around and sort of unfolding in a wave uh, in a really creepy kind of way. So I've got some new art to show you guys from my sketchbook tonight, which will kind of expand on that. Uh, and, and this is gonna be sort of a desert-like uh, um, dragon that both flies and can sort of swim and glide uh, on top of the uh, the, the sand in the desert, sort of like a sidewinder snake. Uh, and so the idea would be that it is able to go underground in the dunes and things like that when it's out in the desert. So we're going to try to give it a body type, uh, texture, and functionality with the way that the wings and everything else moves so that that is appropriate. So it's about nailing down both the look externally so that it looks very rugged and rough and like it would exist in the desert. And it's also about thinking about how it will function. And so as it moves, as it's going to animate in the film, uh, we need to make it look as realistic as we possibly can. Obviously we're making all of this up, but we wanna get it to a point where someone can look at this in the VFX and go, okay, yeah, that could work. Like I could see that, that's believable. Uh, and so if we can accomplish that, we've done our job. Uh, so yeah, some other notes here, but basically that's what we did last week. 
uh, and we got it up to a point where we were starting to draw the dragon in a three quarters view. Uh, didn't get past the wings and I still am not super happy with the design uh, for the wings right now. They still feel very um, much like we took them from another dragon design and just tried to you know, pop them onto this dragon and see if it will work. Uh, so I've been thinking about that a little bit this past week and I wanted to share some things from my sketchbook with you guys. So this was where we ended up and here is some stuff that I brought in from my sketchbook today. So I um, made some notes about uh, the things that I talked over with my team. Uh, the wings even here are um, needing a refinement. We're still sticking with that sort of spiky uh, bat wing type you know, movement and anatomy and that may or may not work. And so we're gonna play with that tonight and see what we can do about that. The rest of the body, as far as the thumbnail that we have here, I think is heading in the right direction. So we've got more of a um, armadillo type, you know, exoskeletal body structure for the dragon. Instead of doing scales, it's going to be layered in plates. And then we've also got these sort of centipede like legs that are unfolding from the side of the body here, uh, which will tuck in a sort of uh, crisscross pattern all the way down. So I like that. I think it's working with the rest of the body type, but we definitely need to work on the wings and uh, played a little bit with some of the head designs so that they're a little bit more angular and snake-like uh, because I think that's working a little bit better for the design. Uh, here we've got some notes on the wings as far as possibly which direction the veins should be slanted and angling. Uh, we've got to think about how the wings are structured so that when uh, the, the dragon is flying and also when it tucks the wings in behind on the spine, that it can easily do that in a way that feels you know evolved and well thought out uh, and, and is designed well because nature is designed well. And so uh, one of the things I, I had in mind was doing in a design like this, but the problem is if the slanting is kind of going up towards the, the surface of this main arm for the wings, um, folding that in backwards is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I, I then transitioned down to this design down here where the veins were kind of headed in the other direction, away from the spine. And I think this will be a little bit easier to kind of tuck back into the main surface of the body because the intent is to eventually get the wings to where uh, when they come out, you know, they're obviously widespread, uh, but they're, they're made to kind of blend into the rest of the spine so you can tuck them away and they will kind of disappear into the background. Uh, so again, we have to figure that out. That's a problem. Uh, and so that's why I say tonight, it's more about problem solving uh, and design than it is about creating something that looks really, really pretty, even though that's the fun stuff. So uh, tonight you're gonna see that in action as far as what a real designer does to overcome those uh, problems. I'm also gonna get into some helpful tips. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna kinda share tonight is how I got this uh, sketchbook page into Photoshop because uh, a lot of people might not have done that. Um, and so it'll be a quick tutorial, but I'll walk you through kind of what I did because I have another page over here. So this is just a picture that I took with my phone. I didn't scan these pages. If you have a scanner, you can feel free to do that. You're gonna get a little bit cleaner image, but I'll show you how to do it from a pretty rough looking photo like this. Uh, so I just want some of these uh, head designs that I drew up in my sketchbook and I want to put them on this other page over here so we can have those around for reference. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click on my uh, background layer over here and then we're going to hit OK to get rid of the lock so that I can edit this. I'm going to add a new layer. Let me go ahead and make this full screen. Add a new layer. Let's fill this with white. Put this in the background. And then we're gonna start playing with blending away all this other extra junk in the background. So we're basically getting our sketch isolated on a clean, uh, a clean surface here. So uh, the first thing I would do is play with levels. So you can hit Control L to bring up your levels or add an adjustment layer with levels. And um, the idea is to pull the whites down so that you can get the background as white as possible. Uh, and you'll see that some of my other pages behind this one uh, with notes and things are kind of bleeding into here. So we're going to have to kind of take care of that as well. Uh, but the first thing you do is you see, you're always going to see this big spike in the background and that's going to be your white uh, peeking out there. So if you can bring this over to here, you're going to see that start blending away and it's going to be just a little bit of a game of tug of war. So what you're going to want to do is not go too far because you're going to blow out all the details, but you just want to go far enough that you can kind of blend away 
all the junk back here that has some of that shading. And then you can do the same thing with your blacks, bring that up so that your uh, pen or your pencil is showing up a little bit more. And then if you want, you can play with this middle slider to get a much more subtle blending uh, in the background in the way that that is working. So you can do that. Uh, you can also play with these if it helps, but to get started, I think that is a good place. And right about there is fine, so I'll do that. And then uh, I put the white layer in the background because I wanna give myself uh, something that I can use to see through this. So well, I'm gonna double click on the layer style here and let's play with these blend uh, parameters down here. So basically this top layer under this layer setting here, you can bring up your blacks or bring down your whites and it will start to blend away those parts of the gradient in the background. So if I were to bring my whites down, you can see that it's starting to bleed through and show this underlying white layer from underneath. And that's kind of what we want. And you want to kind of go as far as you can until you start getting details disappearing. So that's a little too far. And I want to bring this back a little bit more. And then to taper this off so it's not so noisy, what we can do is hold Alt and then uh, drag this shader over here or the slider so that it is going to kind of fade this and blur this out uh, for this transition. And then you can just kind of play with these until they are in a good spot here. You can do the same thing with the blacks if you want uh, to bring this up. Uh, you can go this way and do that. So for now, I think that is gonna be good enough to kind of get started. And we will take that and clean this up over in the other layer. So I'm gonna drag this layer over to my sketchbook page, drop this in. And then the first thing I'm gonna have to do is scale this down because it's pretty big. So let's hit Control T and I'm gonna check off my uh, link here so that the width and height are scaled proportionally. And then I can just drag on the width of the height to scale this box down. And I wanna put these uh, maybe somewhere over here. And we'll start off by making them maybe about this size and then we can play with uh, making them a little smaller if we need to. So let's accept this. I'm gonna turn off this other page so we're just seeing this. And the first thing that will help make this job a lot easier is isolating uh, the elements by themselves so you can get rid of the, the rest of the stuff that you don't need around it. Uh, so let's take our lasso tool over here and I'm just gonna quickly surround the details that I wanna keep in here with a basic lasso. We're gonna go ahead and finish that out, create a clipping mask or a layer mask here for that and we can hit apply. And that's gonna basically get rid of everything around that except for these details. So the only thing left to do is really blend this back into our background here. So uh, if we need to bring this further down, we can. Uh, I don't want to start getting rid of too much because these details are gonna go over here, but something like this might work. And then if you're starting to lose some of the blacks in here, uh, what you can do is bump those up a little bit the other direction um, with maybe a uh, levels again. So let's hit okay. And then maybe pop open a levels over here. And then we can bring up those blacks again uh, just until we start seeing some of this come back. And what's great about the levels is you can also do a layer style. And so it would only apply to certain sections. And so first thing I'll do is bring the blacks up where they need to be here. Let's do a clipping mask. It only applies to the details on the sketch layer here. And once I've got that coming back to a point where it's really good for this section here, it's a little too heavy on the rest of this, but I can use uh, the mask here to help me define that. So what I'm gonna do is let's switch to a circular mask and let's draw a mask here just for this part of the sketch. I'm gonna fill this with, um, let's invert the mask here. Fill this other section with black so that this mask is not applied to those sections. And now you can see that that black uh, mask is only applied to this one uh, snake head down here. Anyways, so uh, once you get that in there, you can go ahead and combine that. Let's bring the other pages back. And now we can just kind of decide where we wanna place these in here. And what's great about this is now I can kind of rearrange my sketch page uh, so it's a little bit cleaner than it was when I was laying this out before. So let's switch back to our lasso tool over here. And I'm gonna grab these heads. I can grab them one by one or in big sections. And then since these are cut out from the background, I can just kind of move them into a better place here. 
And uh, so anytime you see, you know, really good looking laid out sketchbook stuff um, on ArtStation or anything like that, odds are um, some of the really good artists may have done that in their sketchbooks, but a lot of them have brought them into Photoshop and uh, kind of touched them up in a way that will make the layout stand out a little bit better. So a um, little tip there for you guys if you would like to showcase your work a little bit better as far as your sketches go. And uh, let me grab a little bit more down here. And there we go. Pull this over here. Okay. And so what I kind of like to do is keep an ongoing layout of pages uh, for all of these sections. And that way, when I start having multiple ideas, I've got everything sort of saved uh, in all of these pages that I can go back and pull out just little details from each section into a main design later on. Uh, so if I have a detail that is like, for instance, this eye that I came up with, uh, I wanna sketch that real fast so that I don't forget what that looks like, um, but I may not be ready to work on the eyes yet. So we're gonna have to come back to this later and pick out some of the heads that we like here. Okay, so let's get into some of the things we're gonna work on tonight. Uh, like I said, the wings are gonna be a big thing, so let's just go ahead and jump into that section uh, for tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead on this page, pull this layer into here, and as you can see, I've got each of my pages in groups uh, in case I wanna come back to these. I tend to like to uh, desaturate these so that they're black and white, uh, because when you take a picture with your phone, it's typically gonna be in color. Uh, so for this one, to do that, you can just hit Control, Shift, and U on your keyboard, and that will turn this into a grayscale layer. All right. So let's uh, talk about what we would do first to work on these wings. Uh, looks like we got some comments in the chat. Uh, Anton is saying, hi, thanks for the stream. No problem. Glad you're here. Excited to see you guys tonight. Lauren's back and uh, never misses a stream, so happy to see her again. Uh, she says, make the wings convert to dorsal and lateral fins so that the dragon can quote unquote swim through the sand. So that's interesting. Uh, and so we will jump in there tonight and see if we can figure out a good solution for everyone. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is try to play with um, some more design types of the wings themselves. We're going to start with this one design because I think the thumbnail as far as a pose goes kind of is already working. And so we're going to pick this out and just start playing with this uh, on the page. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this one uh, sketch here and I'm just gonna surround this so we get a selection. And we are going to go ahead and save ourselves some time by copying this to some other layers. So I'm gonna drag this up into a new uh, layer up here, turn our page back off, and then we're just gonna have uh, this right here that we can play with. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and get rid of the wings that are already there because uh, again, we're not gonna be using these. We're gonna redesign. So I'm gonna just zoom in here a little bit and we're just gonna go ahead and erase out these wings so that we can start playing with some other uh, designs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get in here and kind of detach them away from the body with the eraser tool. And I just wanna get these inner edges away so that I can quickly get rid of it but it's kind of like surgery at this point. You want to make sure you're not going to cut away too much from the existing details here. And I like working this way a lot with Photoshop and my sketchbook because um, sketching is one of those things that I do on a daily basis uh, in my physical sketchbooks because I like the way that it feels compared to doing it digitally. It's a little bit easier, more intuitive, um, but you're not going to get all the benefits that you would get with something like Photoshop uh, or one of the other drawing programs as you would on the computer in your sketchbook. And so what I do is I start in my sketchbook and then a lot of times I'll bring them into Photoshop after the fact and touch them up in here because it will give me the best of both worlds. Okay, so now we've cut out the, um, the wings a little bit here. looks like we've got a little section here that we might wanna get rid of. I think that is part of the wing shoulder anatomy there. Once we've got this cleanly cut out, we can go ahead and move this into the corner over here. And we wanna give ourselves a lot of room to play with multiple copies. And so I'm gonna zoom out here. And with this one layer, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate another one and we're gonna move this out to the side. 
And we just want to kind of plan a little bit in advance now how many we can get on a page with wings attached out to the side before we are going to get too crowded here. So let's go ahead and pull this other one over. I think I'm going to plan for about three to a layout uh, on a row before it's going to get a little too crazy and crowded. So uh, let's plan on that. Just kind of measure them by eye and then let's merge these, copy this again, and then pull the row back down to the bottom. And now we've got a whole page full of these here. Uh, so I'm gonna undo what I just did there. Notice that I've got these set to multiply uh, so that it takes away all of the white backgrounds. Uh, if these are on normal, you're gonna see the white background still coming through. Uh, that's another method that I use to go ahead and get rid of the white background from this sketch layer. So let's go ahead and switch this to multiply. When we uh, combine these with control E to merge the layers, all we have to do is switch this back to multiply and we will be good to go. Okay, so now we just need to uh, make sure these are in a good place and then we will create another layer and draw on top of this. Why not name this page four? And what I want to do here is go ahead and just do some line work and put in some ideas for these wings here. So I'm going to grab my sketching brush, open up brush box over here, and let this load real fast. Just grab a brush, and then I will jump in and collapse any of the panels I don't need. And then let's just go full screen and play with this. OK, so. To make sure we have black as our color there. And now we just want to really quickly get in here and kind of sketch out some ideas for wings. So if you guys have any ideas in the chat, I know Lauren, you were talking a little bit about uh, your ideas for how the wings should be shaped. So the idea with these six layouts is to have the wings spread out to the side at this point. So we can kind of showcase what those look like to the rest of the team in a design. Uh, and so let's brainstorm a little bit about what those would look like. And right now I'm not gonna pull up any reference because I've been looking at reference lately uh, with lots of bugs. Uh, but in, in a typical situation, you would want to have something like Pinterest up on the side and uh, kind of work from that. So what we've been kind of doing is having the wings come out in sections. So I don't know where we wanna start this, but if you have something in the background, as far as the anatomy goes, you'd have something attached to the side of the body here for the wings. And then you'd have sort of these skeletal sections coming off one and then two with another sort of joint there. And then you'd have a third one and then another joint. And you'd have a fourth one here. And we've been kind of doing claws on the sides uh, on the tips of these like this uh, to kind of give it a little bit more of a ferocious and uh, evil looking, you know, design. Uh, but right now this isn't working if we just draw this out like a bat wing. So one of the ideas we had from the original sketch was to make these a little thinner because uh, we had been bringing these way down here behind. And I think if we try to go a little bit more uh, angular and thin, these could work a little bit better with this current design. And so we'd want to do something a little bit more tapered like that. And that way it's not going to be so uh, big in the silhouette. So let me go ahead and draw this out here. And once again, I'll be looking in the chat for your guys' comments on the next few of these. So let me know if you want me to work on a specific design that you guys have in mind, and we will tackle that. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So we don't wanna to spend too much time getting in here and detailing. We just wanna work on what these are gonna do individually. Something like this. And you can be really messy at this stage. The whole idea is just to get the concepts kind of across in a simple way. Uh, so this would work in a little bit better way than we had because I think these would more easily tuck in on the back. Uh, so we could do that. Let's look at the chat. Uh, Lorian says she, she means when the wings fold back in, they convert to fins. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and then she's saying, how about multiple wings like a dragonfly? Uh, and so let's talk a little bit about how the anatomy would work on an object of this size. Because obviously with a bug that is smaller, you're gonna have a lot less mass. And so these wings, as they're multiple 
in nature can obviously flap uh, you know, so many times per second a lot, lot faster uh, because the mass of this bug is not uh, really, really large. But when you have a giant um, you know, bug or animal that then has to have its own set of wings back here, they're gonna have to have more muscle uh, to move more mass around. Uh, so it's just basic laws of physics. So the problem with doing these very bug-like wing configurations where we're gonna have rapidly moving uh, hummingbird style wing motion, uh, in my opinion, is that we're not gonna be able to get wings that are that large to move that quickly uh, in a realistic nature. So we are trying to stick more to wings that would be something you'd find on a mammal like a bird. Um, and we can also play around with doing an idea like Lorian saying where uh, we do something amphibian or fish-like uh, to combine the way that they move because I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, so let's play a little bit with what that would look like. So uh, I can't stop too long on each one of these or we're not gonna get through many of the design configurations tonight. But the idea would be to get to a point where we pick one of these to work on uh, in a more fleshed out nature and then we kind of move on. So uh, let's look at just going ahead and, and sketching up the bug designs uh, for the wings and see if that would be something that could still look good. And then we can maybe try to find an argument for that working if we think that that is gonna be a design that works. Um, and I will try to make these sort of to scale. And notice how loose I'm going. I'm not super concerned about um, how pretty these are right now because we can always go back and touch these up. But main thing is the silhouette. If we can nail the silhouette down in a way that's kind of pleasing and works, then we can sell this to the guys upstairs, if you know what I mean. Okay, so got some veins or some grid overlap, something happening on these wings because they're translucent, uh, or maybe they're not translucent. That's also up for debate. So we can talk about that a little bit more. So these are almost like leaves in the way that they have the veins sort of coming off of them and through them. Uh, and uh, pull this up and kind of create a sharper silhouette on the outside to indicate that these are objects on the edge of our creature here. So that would be more like bug-like wings. I might just quickly erase out some of this middle section so that way we're not gonna have any weird overlap happening. So Lori is saying the wings should really grab a lot of air. I agree, that makes a lot of sense. Make second and third set of wings sprout from second and third locations down the spine. Okay, so that's interesting. So what if we start here and here? <clears throat> we come out with the wings here. Okay, it's getting a little messy, but clean this up. And again, what's great about this being on a separate layer is that I don't have to worry about destroying the sketch underneath with the eraser tool. So she's saying possibly coming off of, you know, one set of vertebrae or the side of the animal here, then coming down again, having another uh, set of joints and then having another section coming off. And then doing the same thing down here. So we might have another section and another section. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure that nothing is uh, too crazy in the way that that's shaped. So one of the things we're gonna have issues with with just the design language of this design is it, how do we communicate the silhouette without also losing all the details in here. Because one of the things we're gonna be talking about after we get done with this uh, quick sketch over and all of these uh, is trying to create a silhouette that reads really well. And we're gonna lose a lot of the arms uh, to uh, the wing design here because they're gonna cover each other up. So we need to think about that. Not that this couldn't work, but we need to think that through. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next one. You guys have any other ideas for uh, what these might look like? 
you know, I've thought about doing different sorts of arms that are a little bit more wavy in the way that they would come out. Uh, and so we've talked about doing vertical bone alignments that would kind of be like a, a bird uh, wing. Uh, instead, we might do something that's a little bit more squid-like in the way that they're coming off of the same structure on the body. And this is almost a little more creepy as well, uh, which I kind of like because one of the things we're really trying to do with this dragon is amp up the, um, the scare factor so that when we do the appearance in the film, it's gonna be kind of frightening. Uh, so we need to kind of think about how to make that work as much as possible. Uh, so this would be a little bit more fluid, flowy, um, but it also kind of echoes the design language we have going on with the centipede style legs. And so this would be a little bit more appropriate in my opinion. Uh, and we could join these with webbing, you know, like this, sort of like you'd have with a spawn uh, sort of design wing like that. And this is almost more like a webbing on a duck's foot or something, but it's, it's very creepy uh, in the way that that's sort of working. So I kind of like the look of that. And if you imagine filling this all in with just pure black, uh, it's got a pretty terrifying silhouette. So that's kind of a creepy thing we could do. Uh, so Lorian actually sent me a sketch, which I really appreciate. Uh, and she's talking about that right now. She says, it would be scary if the dragon had pinchers and a stinger like a scorpion. So let's kind of draw up one of the ideas that she sent me. And I wanna show you guys a little bit about uh, what that would look like. Um, so the tail actually that she sent had a stinger on it, just like a scorpion, which is pretty cool. And then she had, instead of wings coming off like right here, she had pinchers and then wings behind that. And so uh, we could actually try to do a bit more like scorpion anatomy uh, with the way that we have these shaped here and then do this first. These have little spiky things on the inside that come off. Um, and so we could have pinchers coming off the main part of the body here on both sides. And then you could play with what this would look like if it uh, had wings on top of that. And so again, going a little bit different direction for the design here, but it might actually work depending on what we decide to do with it. So, so much of this comes down to execution uh, when you're talking about these fantastical uh, beast sort of things. Uh, and, you know, just because an idea um, sounds good doesn't mean it always works. Just because an idea sounds kind of crazy doesn't mean it's always bad. It just means that you need to have a way to execute it that is going to come across uh, as believable. And so a lot of times it comes down to the artist and whether or not they can pull that off. Uh, and so obviously we're going to need to come back with some scorpion reference if we want to do this justice and kind of figure this out. But this feels a little bit more natural in the way that it's lining up with the body here. We could even do multiple arms. So if we wanted to kind of go back in here and create some more joints, we could then come back out with another set of pinchers. And it would be, again, very creepy. So not sure how well that's gonna work, but we could at least try it. It's definitely gonna add to the scary silhouette in here. So we can play with that. And if we don't like it, you know, we can always go back and say, nah, let's get rid of it. But that's the great part about doing this phase where we're sketching fast and loose because we're not committing to anything terribly hard to correct at this point. Uh, so again, anytime you have overlap like this, you need to watch the silhouette and what's happening because if it confuses the design as you're presenting this, uh, you need to either rethink the design or you need to rethink the pose because the pose may be the real problem there. Uh, okay, so Lorian's asking, what if all the legs had webbing in between them? that could serve as wings. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So she's saying possibly having webbing between all of the centipede legs, which is a very interesting idea. So this would be 
coming out sort of like this. And obviously this would be sort of like a sheet that's stretched over the skeleton all the way down and would tuck into the body as you see down here. Uh, that's very creepy and kind of cool. So uh, I don't know, we'll have to think about that. That could change the entire need for uh, doing wings on the outside of the body over here. So yeah, maybe that is a good solution. Again, that's gonna change the silhouette. Uh, we can fake this a little bit by making this more translucent in the way the background is going to work, uh, have veins and stuff like that. So you're still going to get this read. You can picture the sun shining through somebody's ear and you still being able to see, you know, the, the thicker parts. Uh, and so we would keep these black and maybe these gray back here. Uh, but that would be interesting to connect that all up like that. So might even connect this down like this. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, so what about the last one? What do we want to do? Let's talk about the last design over here. No idea is a bad idea. If you guys want to throw something out, let me know and we will uh, try it out. Okay, uh, big bat wings. Okay, so let's see. It's kind of like what we have over here, but they're gonna be a little thicker. Um, and, I, and that's what we kind of been trying. So let's, let's think of something else we can do that would be just out there, uh, a little different than the bat thing, because we've talked about a lot of variations on that design so far, and uh, it's, it's not really working. And I think it's because the, the bat aspect is so different and, and far away as a bird goes from the snake uh, style that we've been heading towards. So we've actually been heading a lot more towards an oriental dragon design with the way that this is shaped. And then we've taken off the oriental style head and headed more towards a traditional snake uh, reptile style look instead of like a big dragon head or something like that. Um, so we're kind of mixing genres, which I really, really like. And um, again, executing this is gonna be where it either works or it doesn't. And I would love to nail down our solution in the design stage here before we try to get into Blender and uh, sculpt this up. Because uh, if, we, if we know it looks bad here, it's really gonna look bad in 3D. Um, the first set of thin wings looks too much like a flying fish. Uh, so you're saying right here, this number one, we label these so it's easier to kind of talk about these online in the stream. Take a drink real fast, guys. Waiting on number six, guys. Let me know in the comments. You got some ideas. Okay, yeah, I, this one's cool. I like the wings, but I don't like the wings on this version of the dragon. So again, this is a perfect example of, you know, you can't force this. It's gotta work or uh, you gotta move on to something else. Um, you know, this, this works a little bit better and it even scientifically makes a little bit more sense because if you have multiple small wings that are gonna be flying or flapping at high speeds, then you can almost justify it lifting a larger mass like this. At least that's the pseudoscience in my head. Uh, this wouldn't seem to work as well. We do a dragonfly style wing uh, setup, but if we put six or eight wings on the back of this dragon that are huge, even if they're thin, it would almost feel a little bit more plausible that it would work. So maybe. Uh, Lauren's asking why didn't I like my idea of the wings tapering back to the end of the body? Uh, actually, I think that would work. Uh, and, and the only thing that we haven't done uh, in this design is that one uh, because it would be a little hard to draw. But let's go ahead and try that and see what that would look like in a three quarters kind of view. I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding a few of these details into these wings just since we've already started this. 
and then we will draw that last set. So one tip for you guys as you're working on thumbnails or uh, sketch designs in your sketchbook or in Photoshop, if you're gonna do line art, uh, it helps to define different weights of lines. So anything on the outside of the body, you can see for this sketch, if it's touching the ground or on the lower side of the body, it's got a heavier line weight. And then for things that are on the inside, I've kept the line weight pretty, uh, pretty light uh, and very light where the highlights would be. And then anything where there is a border or a uh, silhouette, you're going to get a darker line as well. And so this grounds the design in reality because it makes it feel without shading, kind of like you have some depth there. Let me go ahead and erase this. Uh, Lauren saying number three with joints and claws instead of the dainty veins would work better, I think. Um, possibly. So like maybe like this design, but we do it and repeat it six or eight times uh, on the body. That could work maybe. So this is where we start picking like our favorites and then going into more iterations. So maybe we try that uh, style. So I'm gonna pick the from the other page that I had up. Turn this page off and show you guys again, just to remind you when she's talking about the taper design, the wings going back towards the tail. This is sort of the design that I came up with in my sketchbook. So let's take this basic approach here and try to draw that in a three quarters view on our thumbnail. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, um, same sort of joints heading out to the side, and then we've got this tapering down with sort of spider web like veins uh, going away from the body there. So let's turn this back on. Occasionally, make sure you're saving because you don't want to lose everything. Uh, okay. All right. So we'll uh, finish this one out, then we'll pick like three of our favorites, and then we'll do a couple of more iterations on those and see which direction we like the best. Uh, so I've, I've still struggled deciding where to start the wings on each of these dragon designs. Right about here, after the spike sort of end, is where I've kind of decided to do it, because uh, I think it kind of transitions nicely into that. But, um, you know, you could start them anywhere. We also have talked about not doing the legs all the way down the body. Uh, and if we did continue this design, they would get smaller and smaller until they kind of disappear into the skinniest part of the tail because um, we don't want to kind of overcomplicate this design here. Okay, so we're gonna have one joint, another joint. And I'm not gonna worry so much about perspective because we're just trying to get, you know, the, the basic premise in place here. So we're not gonna worry about trying to get these posed perfectly or whatever, but you know, we wanna do a decent job. So these are also going to have the little spikes. I like to kind of throw these away from the body uh, to kind of give a bit more aerodynamic look there. And then we're having this taper all the way back down to here. So you would actually come off the back end of this. It would follow the contour of the pose and then come up and be joined out to here. And so we're gonna have to kind of play with this to get this to work perfectly. It would be something more like that. So I wanna take the pose into account a little bit here. It's gonna have to go back towards and then down and then we can sort of come out from there. Don't want to get too crooked or it's going to look a little weird. So some sort of nice curve into the rest of this might work a little bit better like that. Okay, so let's start mapping out the other part of this. Once again, we're going to pay a little bit of attention to where the overlaps are occurring and try to minimize that uh, because we don't want to have too much of that going on. Get a little confusing to understand what's exactly happening there. Okay, it's gonna go off the page a little bit, that's fine. 
And then again, we need to figure out. So here it's going to angle back down the same way the side did, but we're not going to see it after about here. It's going to kind of tuck in and disappear. So we want to figure out again a good angle to taper this down. And I'm just going to kind of quickly figure out what we want this to look like. Maybe about there. OK. So it's probably good. And then uh, again, based on this other page here, these need to be angling away from where the spine would be on the dragon. So we need to go down and away. OK, so let's pull up here. I'm going to kind of reposition where that's joined because I think it's a little high. Let's go back down there. OK, so each one of these has a sort of section that comes off kind of like this all the way down the spine there. And I'm just going to kind of imply how this works because it would be too complicated to map all that out. But uh, and then you're going to have these sort of spider web veining back down towards the rest of these and joining up. So again, it's going to get really confusing if you try to draw every single line. So you need to kind of use your best judgment and imply detail wherever you can by tapering off how much you're throwing in there. So out here, we can experiment a bit more with showing how this patterning would work out. But you know, as we get closer and closer into the body and all the arms are starting to overlap, we need to rethink how we're, um, how we're kind of making this work. Being conscious of our time, we don't want to spend tons of time on this right now because, again, this is just a sketch. Uh, but this will at least sell the basic idea. And I'm adding just a tiny bit of thickness to these to try to get them to look like they've got some blood or something running through them to give them a little bit of substance and stability. And again, in here, we're going to kind of leave a lot of this blank because we don't want to confuse the details there. Uh, so that's kind of what we would have. If the silhouette's really not doing any favors for you, you kind of need to make sure you're, you're rethinking how this is going to work and get structured. So I'm not super happy with the way that's, that's working out. Uh, and so maybe here, from here down, it's sort of tucked already back and under. And from here up, we have it coming away from the body like this. Maybe it's even a little further in than that. Any tangents that you have where lines are blending in on the same exact uh, overlap in terms of angle and position, you want to get rid of that stuff. Uh, you'd much rather have them crossing over distinctly than confusingly, you know, rubbing up against each other uh, at a tangent. So make sure that you pay attention to that as well. So I'm going to have the wing come down and tuck at a really sharp angle here. So again, the silhouette looks really clear and defined, and you can tell even in black and white, what part is the wing and what part of the arms. OK, so let's try this. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit, turn off everything, and make this full screen. OK, so let's just look at these for a second and kind of talk about which ones we like the best and why, and then what we might want to uh, pick to move forward. So um, let's pick three of these six to take through the next round. And then we can discuss uh, what changes we want to make after that. So I need everybody to vote in the chat. Um, if you're on your phone or whatever, all you got to do is uh, hit the chat section under the video. Make sure you load the live chat and just type in you know, a number that you want to vote for here.
Uh, Lauren saying, if the dragon has a ridge or of spiny plates up her back, then perhaps the number six wings can fold into and out of that ridge. Um, possibly. It's a good question. Um, how we're going to get the wings to kind of tuck under this layered plating that's going all the way up the way that it looks right now. That's another design issue that we're going to have to figure out. Uh, Lauren saying she likes number five and number six or a combination thereof. Okay. So let's see. Anybody else voting? If you want to vote, vote now or forever hold your peace because we're going to move on. Uh, so Lauren is saying five and six as far as the designs go. Uh, so I came up with six in the sketchbook. Uh, it's working a little bit better from a top-down angle than it is right now in perspective, but we can work on that. Uh, I like five as well. I think it's a strong design. I think that it, it matches the desert theme. And again, the only issue is going to be how we make sure the wings are joining up. So possibly when it ends, uh, the, the arms end or something down here, what we would really want to do is have the wing uh, maybe section out further out here and come up over to here. And so the wing might actually join up out here and stay connected to these giant arms there. That would give you a lot more surface area, definitely, and make it a little bit more plausible that this could fly through the air. So you'd have some more veiny type things coming off throughout here. These are more like, again, leathery bat wings and all of that. So any more votes in the chat before we move on? I'll give you guys one more minute and then we are going to pick one other one and then move on. Again, I think all of these could work. I think they could all be strong designs, um, but you know, you it comes down to execution like we were talking about. And eventually, too, you just have to pick one and go with it. Now, thankfully, at this point, I've been given a lot of freedom to kind of play with which options I want to mess with. And then it's kind of my project, so I can do what I want. But if you're working with a team of people, trying to get everybody on the same page and agreeing on something can be challenging. So you have to kind of think about that as well and kind of pick your battles, you know. Uh, Lauren is asking, do we need for the dragon to actually take off and fly or can she just have the capability to glide from the top of a dune? So we're only going to see the dragon in the shots that we recorded gliding through the air and landing. We're never going to see it sort of like flapping its wings or doing anything like that. So, yeah, I think in this case, gliding with the wings should really be the only uh, predominant factor that we have to kind of plan for. Um, but that's a good question because, again, if you're going to need to see the wings in motion, which uh, most of the time you would, then we need to plan for that. But in our case, no, I think she could take off from something that is a very high peak, and that would be it. Um, just in case, though, we should think about that and decide if that's going to be something we want to include in our design. Uh, I would say if we can get it to where it does both, or maybe she glides most of the time, and then part of the time we also have her take off. Uh, it would be good to have both. But um, yeah, we play with that a little bit. Okay, so uh, five and six are the first two that we're gonna go with. <clears throat> and I think that I would also like to play with number four and see if we can get a workable design from that one. So let's pick those three. And the first thing I'm going to do is isolate these on a new layer. So let me zoom out here. I grab my lasso tool. And I'm going to start picking these out here. So first thing to do, remember, is that we only have the wings on this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these layers, hit Control J to duplicate them, and then hit Control E to combine them into a single layer. Again, change this back to multiply. Let's turn these backup layers off. And now let's just go ahead and get rid of the stuff we don't need. So I'm going to grab everything above, and we're going to lasso that and delete it. And then once again, we're going to take 
this section here, duplicate it, and then move this up so that those are kind of sitting on top of each other. Okay, so now we have our chance to kind of space things out appropriately. Let's bump this over a little bit so we have a little bit more room on both sides. And then let's talk about what we're gonna do here. Combine these into one layer, so this is all connected. And let's create a new layer on top of this. And let's just fill these in really quickly and create some silhouettes. Uh, so to do this, I'm just gonna do one row and that should be enough to work with. Uh, so what I'll do is zoom in a little bit here. Grab the lasso tool. And I'm just gonna quickly grab these sections here and try to fill this in. Okay, so once we get a basic shape in here, if I hold shift again with the lasso tool, I should be able to start an addition uh, to the existing selection. And we just want to kind of trace around the outside and fill this in. I like to do this one little section at a time so I don't have to have so much pressure to perfect this line as I'm filling this all in uh, because that can get a little daunting to try to nail that without any mistakes. <laughs> uh, but you want to work smart so uh, move quick uh, and only do what you need to do. I think this is kind of a necessary step because it gives you a good solid read of the design so far and tells you if you are uh, kind of headed in the right direction. And so what we're gonna do is start with being pretty meticulous on this first one until we get this whole thing filled out the way that we need to. And then we can copy the body because the bodies are the same for all of these designs and use the same basic fill and then we can go back and just adapt it to the wing designs. If you get a little too, you know, squiggly or bumpy or whatever, you can just go back with the Alt key and hold that to uh, subtract away from the curvature there. So just add and subtract as you go. Shift for add and Alt for subtract. And remember the goal is to get a really good clean read for the silhouette. So I'm not gonna follow the line art perfectly, um, but just do what I need to do to kind of get this filled in. Okay, so let's finish out the body here. And if it's easier for you to do, um, do this basically just painting this in, then obviously you can do that, uh, whatever's faster. For me, I think getting a big giant selection of the whole thing just by tracing it can be a little quicker than um, kind of painting the sun because with the painting, you have to kind of still worry about the edges. And here, I'm really clearly defining where the edges begin and end, uh, just like a coloring book. So. Apologies, this is gonna take a minute, but I think it's well worth it. Try to go as quick as I can.
Okay. So that's the basic body. I'll zoom in a little more and get those arms in place. Here it's really important to make sure you uh, are paying attention to what parts are actually the positive space on the arms and what parts are the negative space in between the arms and uh, kind of keep those separated so that you're going to get a clean read with that silhouette. And again, if you mess up, as long as you've still got your selection going, you can always go back and subtract back out um, and it won't be a problem. Got a little sloppy down here. We erase that out. Make sure we're not doing that in any of these other areas. If you zoom in too far, you're going to get a little bit pixelated with the selections. Uh, so that's fine. Just understand that that is a possibility. And we're zoomed in quite a lot at this point. So that is most definitely what is happening. Okay, so here I've just gone through and grabbed all of the outer silhouette for this body. And now with alts, I'm going to go back in and subtract back out where the negative spaces need to be. You can also use the pen tool to trace this and then make a selection after the facts, uh, which is a perfectly valid way of kind of working on this. Uh, so the last thing we got to do is grab the other side and we should be good to go. We've also got the polygonal lasso tool. Right now I'm just using the regular lasso, uh, but polygonal lasso will let you actually draw straight lines. So if that's a little easier for your design, then definitely do that. It's under the same menu. You just have to cycle through those options uh, in Blender, or sorry, Photoshop. <laughs> Okay. So I promise this will be worth it. I know it seems like it's taking a while, but it's going to be very helpful for us. And I'll also share some more designer tips on how you can get a good read on your design silhouette uh, and see if that is gonna work before you commit too much time to fleshing that out. Okay, grab this one. Let's just go ahead and finish out the rest of that silhouette down there and then pick out these negative spaces. I think we're good. Let's zoom out here. And before we lose our selection, we've got a new layer, got black. We're going to switch the paint bucket tool with G and we're just going to fill this whole thing in with black. Uh, if you missed any sections, then at this point you can go in and, uh, you know, fill those in uh, with another lasso selection or whatever you need. Um, but in this case, that's pretty much all we need to kind of get a read for our uh, first design. So let's go ahead and copy 
this existing layer with control J, hit control T, and we're gonna pull this over until this lines up here with our other design, just like this. And so now the only thing we really have to do is get rid of the wings. So I'm gonna turn this original one off. Let's lower the opacity of the fill for this next layer. And let's go in with the eraser tool and get rid of the wings here. Uh, if you don't know, hitting tab will get rid of all of your menus temporarily, and you can always hit tab to get those back. But uh, anyways, that's what you need to do. So in this case, if we've already got the overlap in place um, for our next design, we can actually just leave it so that we're not gonna have to repaint that. That will save a little bit of time. And what I like to do is kind of outline what I want to get rid of uh, and then go in and uh, just lasso the rest of this so that we can easily uh, take this out just like that. So once again, we just want to erase this section here. Remember that the wings are connected in this uh, redraw here, so we want to leave those shaded in. And once again, we get rid of the rest of that. Jump back in, and since we are still on uh, our layer with black, uh, but we are at a 48% fill, all we have to do is, again, fill this in using our brush here. Okay, so again, because of the way that we're choosing to fill this in with the silhouette, all of these uh, with the leg design here are gonna be connected with the wings behind. So this will actually all get filled in back here, uh, as you can see from the edges of these claw tips. We've got the wings going out to there. So we'll do the same thing on this side. Using the brackets on my keyboard to kind of expand or shrink the brush tip as I need to to do a bit more fine detail work. And then once I've got the basic details kind of lined out, uh, I go ahead and make the brush a little bit bigger and I kind of speed up a little bit. Okay, so if you prefer the way that this looks as far as the silhouette read goes, you can keep it turned down a little bit so you can still get your line art read, uh, something like this. But this still gives you an idea of what this would look like if you were going to have it backlit with the sun or something. And uh, again, you want to have a strong, readable design with just pure black so that it's not confusing. So right now, this is what I'm talking about. You can't really tell where the arms are and where the wings are because all of it is going to overlap. And so in silhouette, you got a problem. Uh, and so here, it's much more readable because you got the wings separate. There's some overlap with the head and the pose that we currently have this in, but the arms are very rarely gonna be 100% overlapped. And so this is a much better design read uh, as far as design goes and uh, would end up looking a little bit better when we animate it because of that. Okay, so let's take this copy, pull this over and line this up. Once again, we will lower the intensity here. And I'm just gonna to continue to do this for the rest of our objects until we kind of have everything filled in. This is where uh, doing this type of stuff is kind of brainless and can be very relaxing to kind of work on. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of thing, and I do, it's one of those things I think a lot of people tend to work on puzzles or something to kind of relax them. Uh, and as an artist, I like to uh, jump in and sketch instead because uh, it helps my brain to kind of just turn off and get past the initial design phase and just start, uh, you know, sketching or, or coloring things in. It can be a very um, helpful exercise to kind of turn your brain off and just take a, take a break. So that's actually gonna be colored in back there, all the way down to here. And 
take these edges, make sure we get the tips kind of in place with a smaller brush, and then block in the rest of this fill after we get this in place. Don't forget your smoothing settings on your brush. If you're having trouble creating uh, straight lines with your tablet, then you can turn up or down the smoothing factor right here. A lower factor is going to make it easier to create wobbly lines, but with the smoothing factor turned up higher, you're going to be able to delay the stroke a little bit and create really smooth lines. Uh, so if you're doing curved stuff, I would highly recommend playing with that smoothing uh, because it can make your life a whole lot easier uh, for doing more uh, smooth designs like that. Okay, let's crank up the size here, fill this in fast, move to the other side, and we'll do the same thing. Eventually, you'll get to where you can kind of know with your tablet and your hand positions and all of that, how far a stroke is gonna go without having to guess, and it will help you speed up a little bit as you get in here to do this repetitive stuff like coloring in shapes and uh, you know drawing line art and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of what we got on this one. I'm gonna continue to make these 100% filled in so we can get a clear read from a distance, what's working and what's kind of not working. Uh, and the best thing to do is also to turn the line art off, and if you can, uh, check and make sure that you're still getting a good solid read there. Okay, so any of the stuff that is on this layer, uh, I want to go ahead and cut that and then make sure it's just on this layer here. This stuff is just on this layer and this stuff is just on this layer. Okay, so let's turn our line art back on. I'm gonna grab this middle one and copy this. Let's bring this straight down and line this up and make sure we are happy with where this is sitting. Okay. So I think that's gonna be decent. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this again. I'm gonna move this one over here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm just looking for those details in the tail section to make sure we get that lined up from left to right. I know height wise, they're all the same. So as long as we can kind of get that in place to have a good starting point, then we should be good to go. So we got one, two, and three. So let's start with one, jump in here. And go to town. Okay. So uh, just realized we are gonna end up doing second uh, iterations on these. And so what I'm gonna do before I spend all this time filling these in is I'm gonna wait till we do the line art to correct these, and then I'm gonna fill these in. But I'm gonna save those for later, and now we can have a, a comparison to look at as we talk about these. So again, we have uh, three designs that uh, are, are at various levels of reading, you know, okay in the silhouette form. Uh, this one's very sort of ominous and scary from a, a distance in terms of the way that it's shaped. Anything triangular in nature or has uh, sharp points uh, from, from a design language perspective is going to be a little bit more menacing because um, that's sort of the traditional shapes that you find in villains. Uh, anything curved, round, softer in nature is going to be more something that you would see in a protagonist or like a cute, cuddly character. Uh, so obviously we're going to want to stick with shapes that are going to give us that very menacing, pointy, dangerous type of feel. Uh, so we're, we're not getting as much of a read that works with the scorpion here uh, from the silhouette. And I think that has a lot to do with the pose because it's kind of tucked in right now. So we would need these out to the side to be very defined and distinctive. Uh, between both of these, it's kind of hard to tell which one's working better because uh, I like being able to see all the arms here and having those arms disappear uh, in this, this number six over here is, uh, is not 
super pleasing, um, even though when we turn this back down, it might turn out to work with um, some more of the line art coming through. But this is a good indicator for what may work and what may not work. Uh, so Morgan is saying in the chat, try combining number four and six. That may be a good idea. We can try that on one of these down here. Um, and so one of the things I want to talk about was the, the other technique that you can use when you finally have a silhouette in place. Uh, and this works for silhouettes or line art or both. Um, but you can flip the sketch to kind of give yourself a different perspective uh, on what's working. And so what I would do is go ahead and uh, take all of these and then let's make sure they're on like a, a line here by themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the line art off. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, transform the layer and then we'll just flip this horizontally. And let's check and see if we get a little bit different perspective on how these look now. And you'll just figure out by doing this that your brain kind of has to second guess what it's seeing at first because it, it's not used to staring at it in this perspective. And that's the kind of trouble that you get into as an artist when you spend hours working on a painting or a sketch, um, or even in 3D when you're doing something, is that you get sucked into thinking and, and shortcutting what something is actually doing in space or on paper. And so if you can figure out a way to shake things up a little bit to where your brain has to reconfigure and sort of be more objective about what it's looking at, you can actually get a better perspective as a whole on what you are seeing and get a, get a fresh look on it. So it's like getting a second uh, first look at your artwork here. So again, we need to decide uh, what from this perspective do we think is kind of working. I think all of them are very, very interesting and could possibly work. Um, let's play a little bit with bringing the line art into this and seeing what we get. So I'm going to grab with our rectangular marquee tool here. I'm going to grab the upper section and I'm going to duplicate that. Turn this off. And then let's go ahead and flip this as well. And we'll play a little bit with combining uh, the silhouettes fills with the line art. So let's flip this. And then let's turn back on our uh, fill layer here. You may have to reposition the line art a little bit to get it to perfectly line back up with the sketch. But once that's done, you can go ahead and pull these up to the same level. And let's go ahead and lower the opacity again. So again, pretend that the sun is sort of coming through the back of the characters. We're seeing a little bit of a subsurface scattering effect or something in the background and we want to determine which one of these is working the best. Sorry about this. My zoom is freaking out a little bit. So let me get this back to a good place here. Okay. So what do you guys think? Maureen's saying combine four and six. Uh, that would be this one and this one to possibly get some interesting silhouettes happening. The, uh, the interesting thing about number four over here is that with the wings as high up on the back as they are, you're getting sort of a bow tie type of effect. And while I don't think that that's going to look very, uh, very good because it sort of comes off like a cape or something on the dragon, uh, I do like the waviness and the fluid motion that you would probably get from wings that are, uh, that are looking kind of like this. So um, if we did end up combining both of these, maybe this, the texture of the, the structure here in the middle could be cut out and brought over to the overall silhouette that we have here. Because again, I think that when you have this big giant um, sort of kite shape, coming up and then a snake underneath. It's it's very sort of uh, creepy in that you got the wings kind of hiding what's going on underneath. And I, I don't really like how that makes me feel. It's a very creepy kind of thing. Uh, same basic thing happening with number five over here with the scorpion idea. Um, and it's gonna be a hard choice trying to pick which one of these we want to finalize because they're both really, well, all three of them are really kind of cool. Uh, so. This one probably matches the least in terms of uh, desert-like nature. Uh, again, we're, I'm reminded more of a 
Um, if we're going to try to relate it to a desert animal, it would be more like a lizard, like that has uh, sort of a big cape around its neck that flares out when it gets angry or scared. Uh, so possibly going off of that theme. Scorpion's definitely more menacing, and this definitely feels a lot more like a bat or a combination of a bat and a snake or something, which is kind of terrifying. Okay, so last chance for opinions from the chat. If you guys have anything you want to add, comments you want to make, or ideas uh, for where to go next that you want to see, let me know, and we will continue to work on uh, these here. All right, so I'm going to turn these off. And let's bring back up all of our sections here. So Lorian's saying, uh, you could still see the legs if the wings were flexible, uh, like a stingray. So that the back bottom of the wings were back while the front of the wings were more forward. Yeah, so on number six, I assume is what you're talking about with the stingray sort of thing. I hadn't thought about that. That's kind of an interesting take on that silhouette there. <clears throat> okay, so maybe number six is a stingray type of a of thing in, in terms of the fluid wavy motion instead of a uh, sort of a bat or something else. Okay, so I still think five and six are gonna be the strongest, but let's go ahead and redraw some of the wings for, for all three of these and then see where this goes. Okay, so these bottom uh, sections down here, let's go ahead and erase out what we don't want and kind of start over. So we're gonna get rid of these, making sure that we don't erase any of the little arms here. At least not too much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've got most of this gone. Let's go ahead and grab the rest of this and we'll delete this out.
Uh, Lauren's saying number four conveys the fluid, flexible feel of a membranous wing. Each of those sections can balloon with air like a parachute. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's going to be important too at this stage, if you can, to kind of do what we're doing in terms of thinking about animation and the way it's going to move. Uh, it can be hard if you if you uh, aren't you know kind of looking up references as you go and thinking about that. Uh, especially if you're dealing with some subject matter that is very foreign to you. Um, but in this case, it should be fairly easy for most creature type stuff to find something to base it on in nature. And that's really the secret to nailing a good creature design is uh, finding something that already exists in the real world and then kind of finding a way to make a hybrid out of it with an existing creature or multiple creatures, like in this case. Uh, and the better you can sort of ground your reasoning for the design and reality, uh, the better chance you have of making it actually stand out and work as a design uh, for your project. And so that's a tough challenge to do, especially if you're new to design and um, maybe you're not a full-time designer. Uh, instead, you're, you know, you're typically just working in 3D or something like that. But if you're gonna start working out uh, projects for yourself to develop your portfolio, this can be a really good exercise to get into where you are demonstrating that you have the ability to an employer to sort of think through a design problem and at least help come up with a solution. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be you know, perfect at it or uh, become a designer, but uh, all we're really doing at this point is going through some basic exercises to think th through a problem and try to come up with a solution. So anybody that puts a little bit of time and effort into this process should be able to at least come out with some ideas. And um, what you need to do if you're having trouble coming up with your own ideas is again, start with the research phase, get on Pinterest, get on Google, uh, or wherever you want to pull some images and some reference and spend some time just digging through some influences that you want to add into your creature uh, and your characters and things like that because that will spark ideas uh, for things that you can work on. Because I know when I start jumping in a new project and I, uh, I'm you know, sitting there looking at a blank piece of paper, uh, it can be very intimidating to try to get going, but what I immediately do is start looking at images that inspire me because if I know I want to head in a certain direction, um, I can start looking at some things in nature, uh, especially for organic stuff. And it will always help me try to come up with some of my own creations rather than just sitting here and trying to spin your own wheels uh, because doing that kind of gets you nowhere. Okay, so let's create a new layer. Jump back into our brush here. Get it back to its default settings and sketched again. Okay, so we talked about combining number four and number six. So I think we're gonna want the silhouette number six to kind of stick around and then possibly get into uh, some of the different design variations on number four in the same wing design. So let's again start up here. We need to kind of map out what we want to do. In this case, I like coming off and then kind of dipping away like that, and then uh, tucking, and then coming back down here for bringing that in. Now again, we're gonna have the same problem that we had up top with not being able to see these arms, unless we can figure out a way to tuck these, uh, these wings back in earlier on the silhouette. So it's not gonna match the design that we had on this, uh, this other page over here as far as the wings, because these don't tuck in until the very last part of the tail. Um, but we would actually need to tuck these in somewhere up here if we were gonna still see those arms underneath. Uh, so let's play with that and see if we can come up with a solution that still looks pleasing to the eye. So I'm gonna grab my eraser. And I don't mind cutting off through the middle of these arms down to maybe about here. But after that, we need to kind of already be tucked in so we can still see how these come off of the body. Uh, and so we'd wanna come up here like this, come out and then 
uh, come up like that. But the problem here, if we start up that high, is we're going to lose this tapering effect down the, best, the rest of the body. And so we would either need to move the top of the wing up a little bit uh, or reposition the pose or taper even thinner up to here. And so what we could do is even taper really far up like this and try to come up with a curve that sort of works for us. So maybe something like this would do it. And again, you want to stay, you know, fast and loose and play a little bit. You don't want to get super tight and locked in with the way that you're creating these things because they're not going to come off as fluid. The faster uh, you can kind of draw these curves without letting your arms stutter, the easier it will be to get smooth lines if you're not going to turn the smoothing up. Uh, so kind of be aware of that. Okay, well, I want to taper, could come off sort of like a corner, down and then back in like that. Play with that a little bit. Uh, so Lauren is asking, why not make the wing start right behind the head horn? Uh, so we could do that. We could come up here to about there. And again, it's going to be playing with the silhouette. So right now we have a very strong silhouette with the horns coming off of the head. We bring the wings up too high. We're going to lose some of that as well. And so we have to ask ourselves, you know, what sort of give and take do we want to have uh, with the wing design here? What's also interesting if they come up that high is that there's really not much of an angle coming off both sides uh, behind the dragon into the other mirrored wing uh, on the left side. And so based on this, we might even have a sort of glider type um, wing drawn in where uh, instead of having the structure come off in a very forked manner, maybe we have a single wing coming across like this in the way that it's formed. I'm not sure if that would work, but we could try to figure out if there's a way to anatomically have that kind of function in our design here. Let's just kind of get this in shape and see what that looks like. It's a little weird, so maybe that's not a good idea. But again, don't be afraid to play with that. Uh, because sometimes you draw something and it does work and that's where you want to get creative and come up with some stuff there. So one of the other things we could do is play with how the wing is shaped going up. So this is more like what a bat wing would do in the way that it's formed. Uh, got some more wavy things happening and sort of cut out like that. It's a bit more stylized and we're also going to be able to more accurately tie in these wavy forms. So we need to ask ourselves if these are going to stem from the same place, it would be more like this. Could also kind of layer the wing effects where we got this sort of thing happening. And that would be kind of interesting. I've never really seen a dragon with four wings that are this large, which is kind of terrifying. So let's come off a little bit more like that. Again, it's getting a little messy, but we can always go back and clean that up if it works. Main thing is to stop after you get to this point, kind of take a step back, look at the design and say, all right, well, is this even going to be worth pursuing or do we need to kind of back off and take another look at this? 
Uh, Lauren's saying with the unowing design, it could originate on the top of the spinal ridge and then fold back into the ridge. The spinal ridge could serve as a dorsal fin. Uh, and it looks like she likes uh, kind of what we're doing with this, which is interesting. Yeah, I haven't really seen dual wings kind of stacked on top of each other on a dragon before. And this is much more aerodynamic in the way that it's working. Uh, a little bit more frightening. And I kind of like what this is doing. So let's play with keeping this one around, at least in its current form, a little longer. And then seeing if that works. Okay, so again, zoom out. Make sure you're not too far in uh, when you're trying to take a, a step back and looking at all of this because uh, it, it, it's going to skew your perspective on what's working and what's not working. Uh, but I like the way that that is turning out so far. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and draw on a new layer so that I don't have to worry about cutting this back out. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and save because we haven't done that in a while. Uh, and that scares me. Uh, and let's look for a better uh, position for the scorpion design here because I'm not really liking the pose. This is more accurate to the way that a scorpion would be um, kind of bending his arms, but it's not really working for us as far as showing off the design. So this is a case where we're gonna need to stretch the truth a little bit uh, and play with what would work. If you're having trouble coming up with some of the anatomy, uh, make sure you pull up some, some stuff, post them into the, a new layer in Photoshop next to what you're drawing, and then just use that as a reference for the pose. Okay, so uh, these are gonna be more uh, bone-like in terms of the exoskeleton, the way that they come off of the structure here. Um, and again, I need to do my own research to go back when I refine this to look up how this uh, is supposed to look because I'm just winging this right now. Uh, then you wouldn't want to do that on most of your projects because it could, uh, it could be dangerous. But I think possibly doing some more spiky things on these arms. And I'm going to stretch these out in the way that they would be if we were trying to pose this or rig this in 3D uh, so that we can kind of get a better idea of what this would look like. So we're going to have probably a bone joint there. Um, Lauren's saying when a scorpion threatens, it puts its pinchers above its head. So that's interesting. Uh, and so maybe we want to kind of bend this arm a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab our, our lasso tool. And where this joint would be, let's go right down the middle of it. And I'm going to control T. And I'm going to put my pivot point right here on that joint. And now we can kind of actually change the arm position uh, more like this. Hit enter to accept, uh, hit control D to release the selection, and then let's go back into painting. And then we can just fix the little joint connection down there. Okay, so uh, the arm would bend, come up, and then off of this, you'd have the pincher uh, kind of happening. And so anytime you get a chance to throw in a C curve or an S curve in an organic figure, in terms of the way the anatomy is working, it's gonna come off a little bit more natural. Uh, this is especially true with the human body, but it's kind of true all throughout nature as well, just because that tends to be the way that the muscles and the bones line up in all of anatomy. Uh, and so instead of trying to create um, a pincher that just comes up like this and does a swoop, we would want to maybe duck it back in to give a more uh, C-like curvature back towards the body, which can be a little bit more menacing. Or again, we'd want to do an S curve. So we want to come down like this to where it's coming off and you're having a little bit more of this happening off of the body. So that you can see what that does. It kind of breaks that position with the wrist and gives you a little bit more of an interesting, you know, like it's a claw coming off or whatever like that. So let's undo that. I think in this case, I'm going to want to come back towards to create sort of a pincher effect this way. And again, I'm just winging how this needs to look. I'm sure it's going to look bad right now, but we are just playing until we can get some reference in place. Okay. So again, in silhouette, if you have a smooth shape uh, and you fill this in, 
you know, obviously you've got some solid mass there, but if off of this mass, you've got some of these spikes happening, all of those are gonna add interesting details to the edge of the silhouette. And so when you see me adding spikes and stuff like that to the ends of the wings or any of that sort of stuff, most of that has to do with making this look a little bit more uh, daunting in, in silhouette to somebody that's looking at it from a distance. Because you have to remember, you know, from both the design perspective and from where this is gonna end up in our movie, um, we're gonna end up seeing this in silhouette quite a lot because it's huge and it's gonna be backlit against the sun and, and stuff like that. So we want to kind of think through that. Okay, so we're gonna mirror the pose a little bit on this side. And you can even think about the S shape all throughout the body. So here's another example of it. I've got the head starting here curving around and down. This is one giant continuous repetitive S shape. Uh, so that's how I use that to make the body feel more dynamic there. We got the same kind of thing happening with the brakes and the arms. So some of these are making little C shapes. Some of these are making a little bit more of an S shape in the way that they're curving around. And it's subtle, but it really adds to the creepiness of uh, the pose there. So think through that a little bit as you are designing. Okay, so we're gonna come up here. As the pinchers closed, it looks more like that uh, from what I remember from previous uh, excursions through Scorpion reference. Want to come up a little bit and let's match the spikiness there. We're gonna do a break in the pose, come off and we want to this curve around a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this other layer off so it's not gonna be hard to draw this. And we'll come up this. Okay, so as bad as this looks right now, and forgive me for that, uh, we just want to see if this is gonna work. If they're a little too large, again, just lasso select this section and then hit Control T and go back to the joint and then scale down. Same thing with this one, it's a little large. So let's scale this down a little bit. Okay, uh, Lauren's asking, how about having both webbing between the legs and the wings on the back? Um, yeah, so it's kind of like what we did up here. Um, and I think it can work, especially if we have the arms spread out. So if this was gonna be flying, you would actually have the claws um, rotated and extended out more like he's hanging from something. And then that would extend the reach of the wing structure behind as it's draped down and behind the rest of the arms. And if we actually have the arms coming up like this, then we can actually extend the smaller arms up a little higher so that there's more of them, because I think that would actually work a little better in our case. So we would want to sort of have the pinchers reached out to the side and that way they can have the sinews of the wings draped off of the back there. Uh, so after we get the pincher ending where the wrist would break there, I think we would have the wings connect off of that and down to the back. So here we might actually have a few more arms. So let's just quickly kind of block these in a little bit and determine kind of what that would look like. something like that as far as the joints go. So I'm gonna add a couple to each side. And again, notice how quick I'm going. I'm not spending a lot of time making this look pretty, um, but then they would come down like this and you'd have sort of this creepy webbing draped between all of the sections there. So again, you're gonna have to reconfirm whether or not this works with the silhouette, but I think this should be 
something that's a little bit more creepy. And I really like the ribbing and the way that that is coming off kind of like a rib cage that's been exploded out from the center. Uh, you're also going to get an extra layer of protection. Like, let's say that the arms are all wrapped in. Maybe the wings don't actually tuck in behind. Uh, they're actually tucking under the body of the scorpion here. And so um, I like what that's doing. It would change the dynamics of the way that the uh, reveal of the arms uh, would come out in the shots that we've been talking about, but it would be something that actually is very creepy and kind of is cool in its own little way. Uh, so yeah, totally different design, but a very good solution to uh, a possibility for this creature. So reconfirm the silhouette direction here as far as how this needs to look. Again, the, the arms are folded in more here coming in towards the body. So you're gonna see less and less of the wing as it is coming off the side, but that is exactly what we want. We want this tucking under. So all those legs would actually be covered up at that point. Okay, yeah, that's very creepy. Um, we'll have to see what that looks like. It's essentially the same design as up here. It's just that we have a, a better pose down here. And so you can actually see what a difference the pose makes uh, in this example. All right, so let's talk about the last pose on number four before we work on painting each of these in a little bit. And uh, we'll do another uh, paint in here with the silhouettes and then take a look at what we need to do. We don't have a ton of time, we got about 10 minutes. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting these in and you guys can let me know with the last one what you wanna see and maybe we will have time for that as well. Okay, so let's get in here. This one's kind of going off the page, so we're gonna have some issues. We're gonna to have to come back and fix for layout purposes, but that's all right. So I hope you guys have gotten something out of tonight's live stream. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. Uh, this week is gonna be pretty much a design week. We're going to continue talking about the dragon in various forms, and I'm going to hopefully leave you with some examples of um, how to continue this process all the way to the 3D stage. And uh, I think this is a really valuable thing for a 3D artist to learn because if you can get to a point where you're doing your own concept art uh, for your portfolio, then there's really nothing you can't do as a 3D artist. And um, you don't have to be the best artist in the world as far as two-dimensional art goes, but if you can just learn some of these basics as far as how to get your ideas down on paper, uh, at least for yourself, so that you have a better idea of what you're trying to accomplish in, in Blender, uh, then you are gonna be miles ahead of most people because uh, you know a lot of people will you know, try to have an idea for a creature and the best they can do is just jump into uh, the program and start modeling. And yeah, I can tell you from experience, guys, that uh, that's that not the best way to work um, in, in order to get what you're trying to get uh, accomplished because you can already tell how many problems we've had to face and solve just from what we've been doing tonight and in the previous live stream. And uh, as we continue throughout the week, you're gonna see more and more examples of things that might have gotten us into hot water in 3D, but because we've taken the time to answer these questions now, we are not gonna be you know, beating our heads against the wall because we've made a mistake, and now we're gonna have to go back and undo hours and hours of work in Blender. Uh, so I would recommend if you guys don't have a sketch pad at home, you get one, 
uh, drawing in Photoshop and digitally is fine as well, but there's something about pencil or pen on paper and um, doing it the old fashioned way. And you know, it's cheap. <laughs> I use ballpoint pens uh, to draw all of these sketches that you saw that I pulled in from my sketchbook. I draw exclusively pretty much these days in ballpoint pen on regular sketching paper. And um, I just, I use it as an everyday notebook, fill it up with notes as well as sketches. Try to sketch every day uh, because I think it keeps me sharp. And it also never leaves me hanging for ideas for projects in 3D. So uh, if you find yourself uh, coming up dry as far as what to work on in 3D, then try your hand at sketching, come up with some of your own ideas, and then you'll find out when you get into 3D and you start actually modeling and animating and things like that, that you are gonna have a leg up because you have some really original ideas that other people are gonna find hard to um, come up with the same quality as you will be able to. Okay, so probably won't get to that sixth sketch tonight, but I hope that this was helpful. So let me talk a little bit about what we're gonna be doing the rest of the week. Um, so next uh, live stream, what we're gonna be getting into is uh, more of a three quarters view that we were talking about in the previous stream that we didn't finish. The whole uh, stream for tomorrow is gonna be dedicated to doing a three quarters view of a design that we kind of decide on. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of start from scratch, get the line art up to a point that you can show off uh, what this would look like before having to do anything in 3D. Uh, so that's gonna be very helpful. And then on Friday, we're gonna get in and I'm gonna show you how to create a model sheet so that if you are going to take this into Blender uh, and model it, that you can figure out how the pose needs to be in, in the model sheet, how to get the proportions lined up correctly from different points of view and angles for front, side, top, whatever. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, kind of model this in a way that it can be posed and rigged uh, appropriately without any problems. Uh, and that'll be extremely useful if you are a 3D artist and want to work on stuff. So let me go ahead and fill this in and then we will jump back and take a look at how this is looking. Okay. So I created a new layer just to make sure that I can move and kind of scale all of this stuff around after the fact. Once again, we have a very cool looking um, line concept here. The issue we're gonna have is again, when we pull out with the silhouette and we've kind of covered up all of these interior pieces in uh, black and white. And so not that that can't work. Uh, I just wanna remind everybody that this is not me saying that if the silhouette looks bad in black and white or um, you know isn't perfect that you can't use it. I'm just saying you have to think about it because the, the best way to get a recognizable character, if you're creating it for a movie or for a game, to get it to be iconic is to start with the silhouette. And if you can nail the silhouette down without having to add details to it, then you've already got uh, a head start on most of the other designs. Uh, and then after that, anything you add as far as color, as far as uh, texture, anything like that on top of that for these interior details, are going to make your design that much stronger. So keep that in mind as you are working on your own characters and creatures. All right, let's fill this in fast. What's up, Flea Up Drawings? See you in the chat there. Thank you for checking out the live stream. I'm about to wrap up for this evening, but I will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So definitely come back tomorrow and check this out again. We'll be continuing this project and working on this dragon design. Okay, so let's, let's nail these uh, little spikes at the end here, get those filled in appropriately. Go back with the eraser if we get a little too crazy. Okay. We just have to worry about filling in the rest of the body here. Almost done. OK. 
Okay, let's not miss the stuff over here. Okay, so that wing is connected all the way back for all of this section. Okay. All right. All right, let's zoom out, turn back on our other silhouettes here. Put this one set at 50. So let's set these at 50. Okay, so this one we're gonna go ahead and get rid of because we don't need it right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one with the lasso tool. Let's separate this onto its own layer using a layer via cut. Turn that off. And now we have just these. Okay. So what I'm also gonna do is bump uh, these over a little bit. So let's grab, we've got our line art here, and then we've got a combination of our fill and our line arts on another layer here. Okay, so this needs to be this needs to be down here with our line art. Let's combine that. And then we'll do the same thing with this one, but I'm gonna wait till we bump this over. Okay. So let's turn this off. And what I'm trying to do right now is make sure we can move this over so this scorpion is not covering up the silhouette of our um, of our wings on this one. Uh, so we need to grab this here. And we're gonna bump this over to where we have enough room for both of those on the bottom. Let's take our fill and make sure this lines back up. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Take our lasso tool, grab everything down here, and then let's move this over. Go out to about there. And then we'll do the same thing for the line art. Lauren says, thanks for the very exciting uh, tip about the silhouettes. You're welcome. I'm glad that helped a little bit. I know I talked a lot about silhouettes tonight, but uh, they are very important. Uh, all right, so before we move, let's go ahead and combine this layer. So we have all of our line art there for the wings. And now we can move this over. Okay, so there we go, guys. We've got a lot of designs here to play with. Uh, we're gonna combine that down there. Got five designs total. Um, both of these are pretty much the same, but got different poses. So really we have about three designs. Uh, I don't know, it's gonna be a tough choice. I'm, I'm liking both of these two down here as far as the iterations go. I think they're very scary and um, it's gonna be a tough choice, guys. But uh, I'm going to talk it over with the studio tomorrow, and we're going to see what they say uh, as far as these two designs. I'll pick one, and then tomorrow night I'll come back, and I'll draw that up for you guys. So um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with more tips. And until then, you guys rock, and have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow night.